Hello everyone. Welcome to our Thought for the Week. In this week's Thought, we're going to be listening to the story of the Good Samaritan. You like that one? So do I. Now, the story of the Good Samaritan has quite a tough beginning. In it, someone is travelling and he's travelling down a very dangerous road from Jerusalem and Jericho. And as he goes down the most dangerous bit of that road, some robbers set on the poor man. Yes, he is hurt. Yes, I know. That's not a good bit in the story. The robbers are very bad. They set upon the man and they hurt him and they left him for dead. But it's all right because people come along that road all the time, don't they? Someone will help. And look! Here, coming along the road, is one of the priests from God's holy temple. Well, of course, he's going to help, isn't he? No. He walked straight past. Did he see the man? He did. Oh, my goodness. But someone will come along to help, won't they? We think so. And yes... Here's an assistant from the temple coming along. Surely the assistant from the temple will help. But no, the assistant from the temple saw the man who'd been hurt and walked past on the other side. Yes, I'm amazed too, Sonny. If you saw someone who'd been hurt, what would you do? Now, the thing about the two people who walked straight past was they might have been thinking, what if the robbers attacked us? What if this person isn't really hurt? They're just pretending to get me to go over and then I'll be jumped out on and attacked. But it's not a good thing to think about yourself first. These days, for us, we might have ways of helping. So you might be with somebody who's got a mobile telephone and you can get them to call for help. If in, if you think it's not safe to go over to the person who's been hurt, you can call. Can you remember what number you have to call if you want emergency help? That's right. Nine, nine, nine. You call those three nines, nine, 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 on your phone and someone on the other end will answer and say, do you need police or ambulance or the fire service? And you'll be able to tell them what's happened. I've seen someone who's been hurt. I think they need an ambulance. And they'll send help. Now that wasn't possible when Jesus told his story. So we're quite lucky, aren't we? We've got more help these days than in Jesus's day. What the man who'd been attacked needed was someone who would take the risk and stop and help. Do you think anyone would? It might be dangerous for them. Would they stop and help? Yes. There was someone who would stop and help. You'd stop, wouldn't you? Yes. And we have to be careful, but we can stop and help. So, along came a man, and he was from a group of people called Samaritans. I'm going to say more about that in just a minute. He stopped He looked at the pack that he'd got on the back of his donkey and he found some things that would help make the man's wounds better. These days, we might want to use some disinfectant or a bandage or something like that. He used oil and wine. And they acted as disinfectants and helped clean the wounds. And he bandaged him up, helped him onto his donkey and took him to a place where he could be looked after. An inn. And he said to the innkeeper, here's some money. I've got to go on and finish my business, but I'll come back tomorrow. And if you have to spend any more than that, I'll pay you the rest tomorrow. Now, that was really kind, wasn't it? Jesus told that story to show us what we should do to be kind to someone else. The one who was kind and caring, the one who was a neighbour, was the Samaritan. But I think it's important to understand a little bit more about Samaritans. I wonder if you know that word. Back in the days when Jesus was alive, the country he lived in had people from all sorts of different groups who lived there, just like in our country today. 
There were the people who were natives of the country. There were people who had lived there for hundreds of years. Jesus's people, the Jews, and the Samaritans as well. And there were people who'd arrived much more recently, Greeks and Romans and other traders. Now the Samaritans and the Jews had all arrived at about the same time in the country hundreds of years before. They were all descendants of God's chosen holy family. The Samaritans lived in a particular part of the country called Samaria and other Jews lived elsewhere. But gradually over the years the Samaritans did things a little bit differently. They had their own place that they liked to go to worship God and it was much closer than going all the way to Jerusalem to the temple. And I think perhaps that Samaritans might have looked a little bit different from some of the other Jews. I don't know how, but they were recognisable. People knew when a Samaritan was coming, so perhaps there was a slight difference in skin colour or in the style of clothes that they wore. Yes, we look a bit different to each other, don't we, Sonny? I think someone could tell if you or I were coming along. But does that matter that we look different? No, it doesn't, does it? No, because we're both children of God. And God made us all different. God made some of us with different colour skins, or with different kinds of hair, or different colour eyes. He made some of us people who love watching football. You like watching football, don't you? Or rugby, that's what I like. Or singing, or dancing. Some of us are great at science. Some of us are brilliant at art. We're all different. But in some communities, people treat people who are different from them as though they're frightening. They exclude them. They treat them badly. When it's all about where someone comes from or what their skin colour is, we call it racism. But it can happen in all sorts of ways between people who just have different ways of doing things. And that's a bad thing. Jesus wanted us to know that no matter what our background, we all matter. And so he chose to make the hero of his story a Samaritan because his people, the Jews, thought Samaritans weren't as good as they were. And Jesus wanted them to understand that Samaritans were every bit as good as they were because they're God's chosen people too. God made them and he loves them. God made and loved every one of us. So this is the other meaning of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Not just that we have to be kind to each other and good neighbours, but that everyone is equal. That there is no one group of people who are lesser or not as good as you or I or Sonny. Everyone is made by God. Everyone is special. I'm going to say a prayer now and if you agree with my prayer perhaps you could say Amen at the end of it. Dear God thank you that you make every one of us different from each other and that it doesn't matter what we look like or what things we like to do or where we come from you think we're all special. Please help us to see your design in each other and to treat everyone as special, to see everyone as special the way that you do. Amen. So here's your challenge for this week from Sunny and from me. We'd like you to treat everyone the way Jesus saw the Samaritan. That means a special child of God. No one is worse than you. No one is less important than you. No one counts less than you. You count and so does every other person. Can you make everyone around you count this week? I'm sure you can. Treat everyone as being really special, just like Jesus did. Have a lovely week and may God bless you. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Sonny. Bye-bye.